A few weeks ago, I made a comparison video between Webflow and WordPress as part of my Webflow for CEOs series. Now, truthfully, and as mentioned in the comments, this isn't a direct comparison. It's like comparing apples to oranges with things like Elementor, DV Builder, Oxygen Builder, Bricks Builder, and my personal favorite, Pine Grove. These page builders are more of a direct comparison. And so in this episode, I wanna break down the two and give you the current state of WordPress and more specifically page builders in 2024 so you can really compare WordPress to Webflow. So let's break it down. To briefly um, summarize my, my previous video, Webflow really was an exciting piece of software because it allowed you to build a theme exactly as you wanted it. You, you're able to create real HTML elements and style them as you want it. Whereas WordPress, you, you can still do this, but you have to write the code for it. And once you've written the code for that theme, you're stuck with that theme then. And then WordPress enables you to just add the content, change images, really basic stuff. But you're stuck with that theme unless you get a developer to then change the theme. So it enabled a lot of quick prototyping, a lot of changing of the theme, Webflow this is. Um, whereas WordPress, you, you're kind of just stuck with it. But now, and I think Elemental was introduced in 2014, whereas Webflow was introduced in 2012. So it really was the first of its kind. Whereas now as, as companies need to iterate faster, they need more direct control over the design and the aesthetic of a website, we, needed, we began needing more. And that's where Elemental was born. And whilst I think that Elemental still has its challenges in terms of UX, um, just a general look and feel, really, once you get past that, and you do, and this is why companies refresh their branding, refresh their design, is because it gets stagnant, you, it begins to fade into the background, and you just focus on the work. I agree a nice UI is a welcome addition to a piece of software, but again, once you get over it, you sort of get over it. Um, and I really believe the by learning a few extra little things, you can leverage the extra power that WordPress gives you. WordPress still might be a valid option. So let me present to you the current state of these page builders and how it compares to Webflow. And I'll let you decide because again, the real power of WordPress really comes down to being able to integrate with services on a deeper level than just botching Zapier and if this then that kind of automations in place or having you know relying on these integrations that Webflow may or may not have it might be more viable to go down a to, to go down a WordPress route. So with that let's take a look at Elementor as it currently is and you can start to see how it compares to Webflow. Now it's worth pointing out that you can't select or touch these things. And this goes into a, a few concepts you need to learn about WordPress. Now WordPress separates the content area from the header and the footer. And these are, the header and the footer is something separate we need to design. And you can obviously change headers and footers depending on the page and stuff like that. But every page you create will have the standard header and footer that you've created. So given that, we're only really focused on this central area. And these are the sorts of elements which you'd probably come to uh, expect from Webflow. Now you start to get into these more advanced things and this is where you're gonna need to pay for um, Elementor Pro, which if we have a look, it comes up to 59 USD per year, which is a far cry away from the expense of Webflow. So it is a hell of a lot cheaper. So we drag in a container here, we can change the styles. Um, and all of these types of options are, again, just what you'd come to expect really. They even have motion effects here. So you can have it fade in and things like that, basic animations. You can even have custom CSS, which actually targets that specific element, presumably. Given that then, here we can add a title. We've got some um, flex boxes here. So if we just keep adding some boxes inside of that. And looking down here, you can have custom HTML. 
and you can change the HTML tag just like you would expect is not that dissimilar. So it is really just a case of learning the interface a bit more, which given you, if you know Webflow, you really start, I think this is a much more approachable UI and I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit that uh, Webflow is a lot better UI, but given that you know more, I would say a more advanced UI, this actually becomes pretty self-explanatory. Now, there's a lot more to this, obviously, and to get the most out of it, you need to understand concepts like the loop, the header and the footer, as I mentioned, and post types and things like that. But I just wanted to give you a taster of the UI, given that you know Webflow. Now, I think a, a much more relatable piece of software is Bricks Builder. And this really is something that looks and behaves like Webflow. You can drag elements in here, um, just like you do with Elementor, a uh, bit of rich text and all that sort. You can see your DOM structure here. And as I go in, I can start to add classes, change some of this stuff, really, the styling and all the rest of it. So from my perspective, Bricks Builder is actually the one of the more powerful and more approachable versions of a page builder that gives you that finite control that we've come to expect from page builders. Heck, in recent years, WordPress have even introduced blocks, which you might be surprised at how much you can get away with with their blocks. It's a drag and drop interface and you can create all sorts with it. However, it lacks a lot of the design manipulation that Webflow offer. I just thought I'd mention it. Let's address the elephant in the room, which is really setting up WordPress because there was nothing like signing up for a Webflow account, uh, creating a site and just having everything there all in one. And it is nice to have that. Quite frankly, it really is nice. But however, WordPress do offer an option that's basically the same as that. It's WordPress.com instead of .org. There is more of an apples to apples comparison of the fact that you can just sign up and spin up a site without writing any code or whatever. So with that, let's take a quick look at the pricing options that a WordPress.com website gives you. Now, given we're trying to contextualize this with Webflow, you're pretty much gonna ignore the free option, personal and premium, because what you'll notice is that the one that, we, that I'd recommend going with, which is the business plan, which is 20 pounds, this is the one that allows you to install plugins and themes. All of the rest of them are really geared towards a professional blog. Um, not really much going on, just using WordPress as a blogging platform, which does actually equate to a similar price to Webflow, minus of course the workspace plan. Because like I say, you can install plugins and themes and the idea here, here is that we would install Elementor, um, Bricks Builder or something like that. But you also get CDNs, which again is comparable to, to Webflow. You do also get security and unrestricted bandwidth, which arguably is a lot better than Webflow solution, but it's just, the price is just a bit too much. I think we can do better with the alternative option. There are a lot of hosting solutions which are so much cheaper than Webflow's hosting solution. You're talking three pounds, four pounds a month, really for my personal favorite, which is hosting it. And I'll leave a link down below to, to that, that plan. They have one button click um, setup for WordPress websites. You literally pay for your hosting plan. You say you want a, uh, a WordPress website and they do all of the rest really. And again, extra steps, but not to the extent that you're really just bogged down with days and days of setting up a WordPress website. You're literally talking minutes to set up a WordPress website. Which option you go for really doesn't matter. At the end of it, you're still left with a WordPress website. The next step really is uh, the, a lot of what people give people pause about WordPress is really the speed, the sluggishness, and just generally the, the, the setup. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna link down below a step-by-step -step on setting up a, a Webflow website and the bare minimum plugins you need to have it matching WordPress. And again, you're not gonna get around the additional work that it takes. Learning these extra steps and just having these extra steps in your mind that you can just checklist them, do them, it just might make WordPress a little bit more approachable. And then you can have WordPress and you can have Webflow just as, as an option for you. So 
I love learning new tools and maybe this is why um, this excites me and stuff like that. So I, I love having the options. It's like just having a Swiss army knife of just different tools, different approaches. I don't like relying on just one tool. So I hope that I can introduce you to the same sort of philosophy. So again, I'll link below a step-by-step -step on all the plugins you need. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to download your page builder of choice. And so with this set of plugins, we, we're really at a, a more valid comparison between Webflow and WordPress. So really it comes down to then learning just a few concepts, which again is beyond the scope of this, of this lesson, a few concepts that Webflow have had since the beginning, which I do think are th very powerful. And it's this sort of stuff that enables you to get more out of WordPress. And this is things like separating a global header and footer. And it's knowing this and knowing how reusable templates work for different types of pages is again, additional learning that you need to do, but with additional learning comes a lot of extra power. And this is something that you have to decide whether this is something that's right for you. I'm not gonna convince you otherwise, but if, if it's a, a route that you wanna go down, it's, I don't think it's that much extra learning, but it is learning. You can't, you can't get around that, you can't beat around the bush. And this will just, again, up your ability and give you more options when it comes to, which I truly believe should be the core reason why you choose a tool. It really shouldn't be about what you like to use. It needs to be more about listening to the client understanding their challenges, understanding the scope and the, the ambitions of the website and the current landscape of their technology, and then deciding what tool to use. Now I have a course that I'm, I'm putting together now. Um, it's very hard to put together a course, so it's taking its time, but it, it, it's a workshop which enables you to find this sort of stuff out. So if you wanna sign up for that, there is a sign up button on the Full Stack Agency website. Let me know that you're interested in this course and it will encourage me to put it out. Um, but ultimately, after listening to the client's uh, needs and something twigs like Webflow just is not the right solution, then if you know these few concepts with WordPress, you have my download link of just setting up a basic WordPress website which, which should last a lifetime, or you are as a better designer. So I hope this clears up the, the real difference or the real comparison between WordPress and Webflow in 2023, 2024. I certainly learned a lot from researching all of this and I'm keen to explore a little bit more and commit myself to learning a little bit more about WordPress given this sort of this scenario, which, which was news to me, to be honest. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna hear more about commentary on web development and no coding tools in general, uh, including and mostly Webflow. Uh, like the video if you've learned something to do with this and uh, until next time happy no coding